Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Waited to Win show for the Sunday edition. Looking forward to being back at Hollywood Bet Scottsville. Just a reminder, our social media strap is up on your screen at the moment, and you can pop us a message. Join us. Hopefully, we can tip you a few winners, and hopefully, we can uh, obviously find some value as well between Darren Burrows and Daryl Marie. All right, so what I'm going to do is quickly give you the market for the first race, which does kick off the buy part. Uh, 15 to 4, favorite number two, Cry Free. Uh, three, Lucia Popova is at 15 to 4 as well. And the one, La Dream is at 4 to 1. It's 9 to 2 and better bar those. Let's go to Darren on the line. Darren, thanks for joining us. Sunday takes us to Peter Maritzburg. What are we doing in the first? Uh, Brandon, I, I wrote field here. I couldn't split uh, pretty much all of the runners. Uh, numbers 2, 3, 4, 5, 7 and 8 ran against each other last time out. And there wasn't much separating them. Um, I thought wide open. Yeah, look, uh, wide open is going to be the order of the play, I'm sure, throughout the afternoon. Um, we'll try and see if Daryl Marie can help us over here. Uh, Daryl, a lot of these horses have met, as you heard from uh, Darren on the line. I know last time out, I think you liked a bit of the dreamer for some value. Uh, Timothy Pretorius, good to have him in the trainers' ranks. Good man. He's obviously worked behind the scenes for some many good trainers. And uh, we wish him all the best going forward. Yeah, wasn't he an electrician a couple of we uh, months back or a few years back? I, I heard he was an electrician. Maybe even weeks ago. We're not sure. Uh, but um, you know what? Uh, this game can be costly. And I'm sure you would have kept it up as well just to make sure that uh, the bills can get paid. But I'm sure you'll make it as a trainer because, like you said, he did all the hard work behind the scenes on some good horses for good trainers. Yes, I certainly hope so. Um, let's hope he can have his first winner sooner rather than later. Brandon, I spent a lot of time on this race. I've narrowed it down to nine runners. Um, that's the field. <laughs> so I put the field in the bypass. I can't help, sorry. Sure, we got no help. We got absolutely no help. Um, so what I'm gonna do is go straight to the selection. So the first race does look to be a nightmare. It's the first leg of the bypass and you can see by those selections up on your screen, Daryl Marie's gone filled and Darren Burrows agrees with him. Second leg, six and eight. Third leg, one and eight. By bank of four, by two and nine. By one, four, six, eight and nine. And that the spend is 360 Rand. Get on by 12.35. Let's go on to the first leg of the place accumulator, race number two. And the market has 33 to 10, number eight, Harley Street. Uh, the 15 are Verney Kings at 15 to four, at six to one, and better bar those. Um, we're going to go to Darren Burrows. Darren, a very competitive race again. Are we going field in the PA? <laughs> no, Brandon. I thought uh, the horse to beat was Keegan de Mello's ride, Harley Street. Now, if this horse appreciates the mile, which he might, um, he's definitely the horse to beat because over a thousand was a bit on the sharp side last time out. Good third behind Red Magician. Uh, he's got the come on look about him. Um, the dangers would be horses like Arverni King. He's drawn out at 15, so that's not in his favor. And a horse like Zabadak, who improved in his second start and uh, is open to further improvement. But I do like Harley Street quite a bit. Okay, yeah, I think there's one or two that obviously are going to look to improve from that last run. And Keegan DeMello finds himself on a horse that I think is going to show a lot of improvements come Sunday afternoon. Uh, Daryl, you agree with me? Obviously, there was a few talkers about this horse last time out. Harley Street looks to be a competitive race, but big chance. Uh, Brandon, have a look at that jockey-trainer combination. 24 runners, 9 winners, 2 seconds, three six, uh, 6 thirds. When they team up together, they're deadly. Uh, this horse has the come on look about him. Um, the only question is the distance. But uh, there's no doubt Tony's put him in, in this event thinking that he is going to appreciate the extra. His half-sister by Flower Alley won over 1,800. Half-sister by Ideal World won over a mile. So there is some stamina on the dam side. Um, that form line has been franked. The horse had finished six lengths behind him, came out and dead eaten, admittedly in a very poor lineup. But he's got a lot of scope for improvement. And then number six over here, back to now with Space Cowboy. Now, last time out, they put the money as if they knew the, re the, the result. He was heavily supported. I see they've removed the blinkers and they put him over further in his penultimate start over 1400. 
he was staying on. So I think the mile is certainly within his reach. So eight from six, but um, yeah, I'm I'm very confident we'll get through the first leg of the PA. Okay. Yeah, um, first leg of the PA. Let's uh, go into those selections. Let's see what the guys are doing for the first leg of the place accumulator. It's up on your screen at the moment. Daryl Marie's gone six and eight, and he's confident he'll get through the first leg by one and eight, by bank of four, by two and nine, by one, four and six, by five and eight, by two, five, six, eight and nine. And the spend is 240 Rand. The pick six, your current favorite in the first leg. Race number three is where it all begins. Is at 18 to 10, and the horse's name is super fast, and that's number eight. Number two, twice the Trinity at three to one, seven to two, and better bar those. Let's go to Darren. Uh, Darren, super fast at 18 to 10, one of the leading lights, but uh, surely we've got to include a good three or four horses over here. Uh, yes, Brandon, I included four runners. Now, super fast, uh, a bit slow away last time out, stayed on nicely towards the finish. Uh, he returns after a bit of a break and they dropped him in trip. I don't think the drop in trip is ideal, but he is one of the leading lights. Uh, Gold Enzyme, now he's a five-year-old. He's only had two starts. Um, he has got ability. I've seen him race. Um, he, they've removed the blinkers. I remember on debut, they said... Uh, he won't get beat uh, with Anton Marcus aboard. And I thought an unlucky loser that day. Um, he's got to go into a play. And then twice, twice the Trinity and Axel Collins. So I went one, two, four, and eight, uh, the safe route. Uh, just take note, in the second leg of the pick six, for smaller punters, banker number four, isn't she Bonnie? I did include four runners. Okay, there we go. That's uh, how Darren Burrows sees it. And um, super fast. Daryl Marie's touched on the fact that this combination can be very powerful. Ran a very good second last time out. I think the Blonde Bomber rode the winner on that occasion, Pierce Stratum. Um, Daryl, what can you tell us about Super Fast? I know it was put away after that last run, but surely with natural improvements, must be a big, big runner over here. Absolutely, a lot of scope for further improvements. Um, I watched his replay in his later slides. He only got a gap very late, and when he did, he was doing his best work in the latter stages. Um, on a line through Axel Collins, he holds a lot of the field of year. So he's certainly one of the leading lights. But if you take Stanley Park as a line horse, you have to have healthy respect for number one gold ends on. Because he beats Stanley Park, and Stanley Park beats super fast. So I've just included him. There is a comment in the front of the computer form. He's 80% racing fit but he's highly regarded. So I've gone one and eight. I'm not really as confident as what I was in the previous leg, but I do believe we will get through. Okay, so there we go. Yeah, it's good to see Marco van Rensburg getting his opportunities in Durban as well. He's a very good rider. Let's jump into those selections. Let's see what we're doing with the first leg of the pick six. Darren Burrows gone one, two, four, and eight. Second leg, four, 11, 12, and 14. By one, two, five, six, seven, nine. By one, four, six, seven, eight, nine, and 12. By four, five, six, eight, ten, and 14. By banker six, and just over 2,000 Rand will give you 50% of this current pick six up on your screen. So give it a go. You don't know what in line for you. You could walk away with a couple of thousands in your back pocket. The race goes off at 13.45. First jackpot. Jackpot one. Isn't she Bonnie? She's your 17 to 10 favorite at the moment. The 14 Swiss Paradise at 28 to 10 and it's 13 to 2 and better bar those. Let's go to Darren Burrows. Uh, Darren, I know you're a big fan of this horse, Isn't She Bonnie? Come Sunday afternoon. Are we having a little punt at this sort of price, 17 to 10? I think it's a fair price, uh, Brandon. This filly um, moved up. Uh, she showed a lot of pace last time out and moved up with a double handful. And I thought she was going to go on to win by two, three lengths. And she didn't find extra the final hundred. They've now dropped her to a thousand meters. She gets the allowance of Rachel Venica, one and a half kilos. Um, I think she'll take a power of beating. All right, yeah, I think uh, isn't she Bonnie could start shorter than 17 to 10 come race time and does have some good form and uh, the yard's been in good form as well. So let's go to Daryl Marie and see if he agrees. Uh, Daryl, yes or no? Are we having a go? Isn't she Bonnie? Um, she's my best bet uh, for the weekend. You know, Brandon, I've really followed this daughter of Karari and I've, because she's got substance about her. 
and I thought she's going to train on. She looks like she's she's solid and she she could uh, she could notch up a good few victories. I'll be very disappointed if she doesn't get it right. I know she's been rested, and there is a comment uh, with regards to her chances from the Hollywood Syndicate. They're saying she's not at peak fitness. Well, this is from Mace himself. Um, but she's got a lot of ability and she is the one to beat. So reading in between the lines, she is fancy to make a winning comeback. Um, in her later start, she was well clear of the balance of the field. I think the first three past the post pulled five lengths clear of the balance. Um, I think I think this is the right type of race for her to break, exit the maiden ranks. Number 11, OBA, is at Variety Fair. Now from get-go, she, she was touted to be an above-average filly. She's disappointed since then. Um, she doesn't have as much scope as what isn't she Bonnie has, but I think she's got a lot in her favor. Uh, the tongue tie, the suit, uh, the trip suits, she's got racing fitness. I'll make her the exact proposition. So for me, four from 11. All right, there we go. Isn't she Barney? As you heard from Daryl Marie and Darren Burrows, they really like the look of this one come the weekend. And uh, let's hope that she can get it right. Current price 17 to 10. Let's go and look at those selections. Let's see what we're going to do. Daryl Marie's tipped a jackpot. He's gone bank of four. Isn't she Bonnie? By two and nine in the second leg. By one, four, six, eight, and nine. By three, five, six, eight, ten, and fourteen. And the spend is 60 rand. So we move along, we go to jackpot two. It does start now in race number five. I see the market has four to one, number nine, twice golden, five to one, number six, with pleasure, who's in good form. The two Sunday Island at 11 to two, and at six to one, and better bar those. I'm going to go straight to Darren Burrows. Uh, Darren, we need all your expertise over here because it's a very open race. Obviously, a few horses that have some good chances. Uh, yes, open race, but uh, twice golden. Now, last time out, he found traffic problems coming into the straight, and he had to switch all the way in for a run, and it cost him the race. I think he'll have the measure of rock for this time around. Um, Sunday Island's a really nice stayer. He was recently gelded before his last start. It was an encouraging return, and he gets a one and a half kilos off. So I'm going twice golden over Sunday Island, and then with pleasure, now if you saw how Keegan DeMello won the race on him last time out, he circled the field, caught them flat-footed, uh, won an absolute cracker. I, I rate Keegan in the same um, uh, ability as a jockey as Anthony Dalpesh because he, he really, he rides with such confidence. He always places his horses to perfection and he's at the top of his game. Yeah, he's a really good jockey. I absolutely agree. And what a gentleman. He's always willing to speak to you, transparent. Uh, I know during the course of the week, he gave all the punters the confidence they need with Karangatang, as well as that was toppers. And uh, good on Keegan. Long may those winners continue. Uh, Daryl, I know you're a big fan of Keegan DeMello as well. I think um, he's got us out of jail many times. He rides with pleasure over here. I thought it was a super ride last time. Yes, but uh, with pleasure is held by Sunday Island. And I've Got a prayer friends for Sunday Island because like Darren touched on, he was gelded uh, prior to his later start, probably in need of the comeback stop. And I don't believe we've seen the best of him yet. He is an improving stayer, lightly raced four-year-old. So he's going to be my top pick ahead of twice golden. Now this is a middle stakes event, so there's conditions and he doesn't come into this race well treated. But Brandon, this was at Scottsville, he's at his best and he loves this track. He's got 50 kg, 52 kgs to shoulder. All he needs is the gaps to open at the right time. And it will be no shock to see him uh, score another victory on the, at this track. So for me, Sunday Island ahead of Twice Golden, I've narrowed it down to two runners. Lovely. We like that confidence. Let's go and see what we're doing with the jackpot two. It all starts now in race number five. So we're going to pop those selections up on your screen. Jot it down. Get involved. Darren Burrow's been in good form. He goes one, two, five, six, seven, nine in the first leg by one, four, six, seven, eight, nine, and 12. By four, five, six, eight, ten, and 14. By banker six, and the spend is 252 Rand. The Michael Roberts Stakes, it's a listed event over 17.50 metres. It goes off at 15.35. Just another reminder about our social media platforms. Pop us a message, get involved, 
and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy every bit of service that they put forward to you. Uh, Daryl Marie, Darren Burrows, Clyde Basil, they do a wonderful job in terms of the Waiter to Win show and uh, they'd love to hear from you. So please pop a message and uh, engage with us and let's hope that uh, we can find you a few winners. Hopefully you're up a few rand by now as we have a look at race number six. Uh, just looking at this particular race, there's one or two horses that have been lurking off a dangerous mark. Uh, Cape Eagle as well as Q Wing are both at four to one in the market. Nine to two, number eight, Dawn of a New Day. I thought that was a cracking run uh, last time out and it's 11 to two about back to black in the Johnny Finlayson silks. All right, so what I'm going to do is quickly start with um, Darren Burrows on the line. Uh, Darren, I just want to have a look at this race and get your input. Uh, back to black. Now, he's an interesting runner because I know they've always thought the world of him. I thought there was a very good win over a trip that was too short for him. Is he a runner over here? Uh, I did include him, uh, Brandon. I went quite wide in this race. Now, back to black. Last time out, he went to the start looking super. He's a really good-looking horse, and he won a cracking race. He will appreciate the step up in trip. Um, Cape Eagle, done absolutely nothing wrong. Um, he won a good race in his last two starts. Um, this is a stiffer test for him, but he could well be up to it. An interesting runner for me is Arctic Tune. Now, I've always been a fan of Arctic Tune. And last time out, I mean, he must have been caught four deep around the bend. And how he still ran second to Q Wing um, was impressive because I thought he would run out of steam the final 200. So being beaten five and a half lengths by Q Wing, um, I think you could put them right next to each other if everything went his way. So include numbers one, four, six, seven, eight, and nine into your play. Okay, yeah, Cape Eagle also a very nice horse, seems to be improving with each and every start, and I think uh, we'll see a nice one from him. Uh, Daryl Marie's here to help us as well. Daryl, very open race, like I said, back to black. Probably the, one of the best looking horses in racing at the moment. I know that uh, Johnny Finlayson always held him in high regard, and that was a super win last time out. Yeah, considering the distance that he won over and how he turned it on, it was eye-catching. Uh, he just needs to settle in running. And I think you will because you got the likes of Cape Eagle, who's got a high cruising speed he, and he kicks from that sp after uh, going so quick. So I think there will be a pace on over here. Um, Brandon, if you have a look at the best weights at column, you'll see the Philly dawn of a new day comes up trumps two and a half kilograms best in over here. But please take note, she did pick up a seven pound penalty or three and a half kilograms for running second in the flamboyant stakes. So I'm playing to beat her. I've got respect for her, but I'm playing to beat her. I like the look of number one of you, Fight Song, who has had a tendency to take a tug in his races. And I think with Cape Eagle in this event, you'll have an opportunity to settle. The pace will be on. He's been staying on in his two starts um, over a mile. So the extra 150 meters will be favorable. And from a one draw, I'm hoping it can just be a length or two closer to the pace of thumb run. So for me, each way value in number one fights on. All right, yep, yeah, there's a nice value over there, and that's what we are for. Well done to the guys. So they put a lot of time and effort into studying. So we're going to go and see what they like in terms of selections. That is um, fight song for Daryl Marie. Like I said, a nice play strike, maybe. The five-year-old Bay Gelding for Gareth Van Sale. Atten Dewem Kuldwa has been booked to ride from draw one. All right, so it is the Michael Roberts Stakes, and it goes off at 17, or it's over 1750 meters, and it goes off at 1535. All right, so we move on to the penultimate, and I see Beechamwood Boy is your current favorite at nine to two. That's number eight on the program. Eddie the Mover, number four at 11 to two. Six Northern Warrior, 11 to two. And the 14 Music is Life at 11 to two. And it's 13 to two in bets of all those. Let's go to Darren on the line. Darren, uh, Beechamwood Boy been super consistent. I'm not entirely convinced things worked out for him last time out. Uh, this could be the value at nine to two. Uh, yes, definitely. You know, he took a long time to unwind his stride last time out, and I think he'll be better suited to Scottville. Now, in his penultimate start, he ran second, beaten ahead by Queenswood. I think he's as much as three and a half kilos better off at the weights. So I think Beatonwood's, uh, Beatonwood boy is going to run a cracker over Queenswood and then in include a horse like Red Magician. I don't think we've seen the, the finished article of him yet. He's recently won his maiden, but there's more to come and Northern Warrior can't be left out. 
Okay, yeah, Peach and Wood Boy. I think uh, Darren touched on a good point over there. It was just a caught a little bit flat-footed up the lane last time out, and Calvin Abib knows this horse very well. Um, what are we going to do over here? The 9-2 to two does look like we could have a small bet. I'm not sure you're on the same page, though, Daryl. I like him. Um, how do you fault his consistency and his improvement since being golded? Uh, penultimate start over the course and distance. Slightly unlucky on that occasion. A gap closed and he had to ease at a crucial stage. Um, I do believe he's going to reverse that form with uh, Queenswood. So I'll make him nice to beat. I also make Red Magician the improver in the race. Now I know he won his maiden last time out, but in my opinion, his best run to date happens to be over this very same course in distance. So I think he's got more to offer. And if you like Beach and Mud Boy, uh, you can't really. Uh, discount Northern Warrior. There's nothing separating the two of them. So, in order for me, eight, five, and six. Lovely. All right. I like a bit of Beach and Wood Boy as well. I think nine to two does look like a decent price. Let's go and see what we're doing in terms of a strike over here. Beach and Wood Boy, a nice each way strike, race seven. It is currently at nine to two and it goes off at ten past four. The lucky last, and again, we've got a very open race in terms of the markets. I see at the moment the six Winter Barons, your seven to two favourites. Uh, five Hooves of Troy at six to one, and it's 13 to two and better by those. All right, so I'm going to go to Darren. Uh, Darren, as always, the lucky last has arrived. It's a Sunday afternoon. We need to try and make some money to keep us afloat for the week ahead. What are we doing in the last? Yes, Brandon, I always like getting out of it in the last if I'm in trouble. Um, Winter Baron, for me, very hard to beat. Now, when this horse won first time out at Scottville over 1,100, he beat a horse like Rulership by three and a half lengths, and he looked like he was going to the tops. Uh, then next time out, the, the 1,200 Scottville caught him out. I think he's best over 1,000 metres. He ran second and head behind for Stino three runs back. Last time out, yes, he was weighted very well with the apprentice allowance, 50 and a half kilos. Uh, he beat Franz Lahar quite comfortably, uh, came around the field and swooped on by. Um, even though he's got a penalty and no apprentice allowance, I think he's still uh, in, in the right race. And I think he, he could follow up in this company. Okay. Yeah, Marco van Rensburg gets his opportunity over here and a nice horse. Um, just want to go to Daryl Marie. I know that uh, you're also a big fan of Marco. You're actually not too far in terms of where you stay. I think just a stone away, but uh, a good man. And good to see that uh, Mr. Puller's given him a chance over here, a horse that can certainly win. Absolutely. I mean, he's riding at the top of his game. It's just a surprise that he, he's uh, not getting a full book of rides at every meeting. But I see Lucky's uh, latched onto something. Uh, you know, Winter Baron, the field cut, cut up terribly last time out and uh, he had a lot in his favour in saying that he was very dominant in his victory. So he could certainly follow up on that. Hooves of Troy, now 1,332 days since his last victory, but he's a consistent son of uh, a six-year-old. He, he should be there about once again. Uh, Stanley Park has to be considered over here, a kilo and a half. Uh, worse off for a length beating. So not much separating the two of them. And this horse number two, Renaissance Man, he's always been highly regarded, but he's a temperamental sort and he, uh, I think he's got issues at the gate. But I think if things go his way, he should be con included in all bets. So I don't make it as clear cut as what Darren does, but uh, I do make him the horse to beat. That's number six, Winter Baron. Yeah, all right. Well, Renaissance man, very similar to that of Daryl Marie. All the ability in the world, but um, very temperamental and uh, can be punchy on his days, no doubt. But um, well done to the guys. Uh, they've got through the program and let's hope that uh, they found us a few winners. All right, so we're going to go to the selections for the very last time. Uh, Winter Baron for Darren Burrows. He's gone win over here and the current price is at 7-2. to two. Thanks to Daryl. Thanks to Darren. Thanks to all the viewers out there. We'll chat again soon. Bye-bye.